is Ricky Gervais has a new special on Netflix where he makes a lot of very provocative, quote unquote, jokes about trans people, about ladies with cocks, basically, is what he's talking about. And he makes a reference to rape. And he does this kind of like imagined back and forth between a woman and a man. Um, not surprisingly, probably least to the, probably the least surprise is Ricky Gervais, that this has caused a huge controversy. It's on Netflix. Netflix, you'll remember, has been in the news recently because they're fighting with a lot of their staffers about what the staffers perceive as an insensitivity to trans and queer issues, in large part because of a David Chappelle special where David Chappelle talked, again, supposedly jokes. I don't find any jokes in all of this, um, at least not in the Chappelle case, about trans people as well. Um, there's something really weird happening in comedy. Now, you and I know what's going to happen here. Ricky Gervais, when he made these trans jokes, and these are the jokes that literally kind of began this special, and then he returned to it at the end, is looking to be provocative, right? This is a guy who Correct. goes to the Golden Globes and insults movie stars. He insults movie stars. Right. Don Rickles made fun of Ed McMahon and Johnny Carson and other performers. The whole power in that kind of humor is insulting powerful people and Correct. taking them down a peg. Correct. In a world where the state of Florida and the state of Texas are trying to pass laws where they're trying to equate being trans with criminality, mm -hmm. I don't know that those are people with power. And there's something kind of – look, I admit it, I chuckled. There's some – there's a funny – you know, there's some – you can't help but laugh when, you know, some of the things that Ricky Gervais says. But there's something – that he will deny, that is so hostile to these people. And I just don't know what the hell's going on here. And I find it unbelievable. And I know he's going to hide behind the First Amendment. He's going to, you know, stand up proudly that people could say what they want. And there's a history of comics being transgressive. And he's probably going to invoke Lenny Bruce. He's no Lenny Bruce, right? The idea that he's, you know, no. that he's somewhere, that he's, you know, some descendant of the provocative you know, Dick Gregory school of comedy is offensive. And I just don't know why Netflix is getting behind this. This notion of free speech, you know, they sound like freaking Mark Zuckerberg. Right. Anyway. Right. I'm stepping down from the box. Well, it is, it is free speech, though. It is free speech. And there's, there's certain It's not free to me. i got to pay for Netflix. Right. Okay. Well, okay. Good point. Good point. But in terms of the, again, I look at things from purely the legal standpoint and the law. And as far as I'm concerned, he's not crossing any barriers of the First Amendment that you're not allowed to cross. I agree. He's not a threat to national security, things like that, that would typically be situations where the First Amendment's been violated or breached. So he's doing things that are provocative. He's taking a different path and he's sticking to it. A lot of people say with these things, you should double down and not back off and so that's what i think he's doing uh again the, the the notion is that under the first amendment if we're going there okay that if you don't like it don't watch it that's first amendment law 101 well okay, uh, okay. if you don't like it don't watch well, it. Exactly. So here's my issue with the First Amendment um, being dragged out in these cases. This is not unlike what's going to be going on this week in Texas when the Republicans are going to say, you know, they're going to drag out the Second Amendment, right, and hide behind the Second Amendment. Hang on a second. The Second Amendment when it comes to gun control, right? Ah! I'm not, I don't want to get into gun control. We're not going to talk about that. But it's the kind of like the constitutional armor argument, yes. right? Yeah. So, so the, 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 the amendment before the second one about right. the guns is yeah. the First Amendment about freedom of speech. Right. Nobody's talking and religion. About, no one's talking about passing laws. Right. right. And the fact of the matter is the First Amendment says the government shall make no law and then it finishes blah, blah, the blah, rest. Blah, blah, blah. Right. It doesn't say anything about canceling your Netflix subscription. Not yet. Not yet. So I think that's a false canard. No one's talking about that. But I do find it just uncomfortable that, as I say, there seems to be a hostility and a kind of pissed offness from these comics like, you know, Stop telling us what we can say. I'm actually going to say something not really offensive just so I can say it, even, and even, if it's not, even if it's not funny. Well, look what happened to Chappelle, right? I mean, he got tackled. Um, and then someone said that they were offended by what he said. Right. So I think that they're taking a chance. They saw what happened with the slap. And now I think we're going to see more and more. The pendulum always swings back and forth and back and forth. 
Do you right? think it's not inconceivable that, like I said, in places like Florida or Texas, and again, I know I'm probably sounding like a bleeding heart, but I'm doing this in large part to just kind of get an argument going here. Not an argument, good. but a, a kind of good. analysis going. Uh, I'm not, you know, what if, good. What if somebody in Texas, or anywhere for that matter, right? Um, I don't want to say this, took out, there was some say violence, it. there was some violence um, uh, committed upon a trans person. Right. Would it be out of the question if a lawyer representing them somehow sued, blamed, um, tried to affix some kind of responsibility to a Ricky Gervais? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. That that would be one of the moves that would be made. Right. Would it be successful? No. No. Again, because they have the right to do that. So we see this happening every day. If someone acts on something that they've seen, then you just can't, and they're mentally ill or whatever their situation is, you can't just say, I'm going after Netflix for what they did, right? I know, Yeah, I know. But yeah. there's just but something- But you're going there and that's some, cool. There's something so bully boy about Ricky Gervais. I've never liked Ricky Gervais. Well, and the other thing I'm gonna say is maybe I'm old school, but we can't really compare him ever to Don Rickles, right? Well, tell I me mean, why. I just think Don Rickles was uh, more talented, more spontaneous, more creative, and and really had more of a style of what he did as a comic. I'm not an expert. I, I know I'm just what you a mean. fan. But don't you think? And again, that, and I'll tell you the other thing. I think Ricky tries too hard, and I think Don was just a natural. Yeah, I, agree I think with you. Don was naturally, I don't want to say mean, but I think Don was naturally disrespectful. And anyone that could disrespect Frank Sinatra and get away with it, there you go. There's probably nothing more soul crushing than analyzing and dissecting comedy, right? Or nothing yes. less funny than dissecting yeah, true. comedy. On the other true. hand, I come back to my point that I made before. Good. He picked on powerful people. Yes. And it was watching the response of these powerful people that where you got the energy from. Exactly. You know, he didn't pick on little people. I mean, exactly. Or if he did, it was a glancing blow to some member of the audience or something like that. But I think th th it's just different now. Let's take this a step further. Okay. So. Is the fact that he is going after trans people, is it more likely than not that as a result of that, something negative might happen to someone who's trans? I think yes. I think people feel like, okay, this gives me permission. But again, can that be translated into a legal cause of action? I don't see that. I don't disagree with I don't you, see but that. I think it's absolutely the same. It's, it, it's not unlike... You know, Depp and Amber Heard, right? Johnny Depp is cool and handsome, and I loved him as a kid. So then it's for it's okay for me to hate Amber Heard because he's okay. Compared to Harvey Weinstein, who was someone I didn't know, you know, looks like Shrek. And it's easy to kind of be on the side of the women who accused him, right? I mean, I know that sounds, they don't, they're not connected. But what we're dealing with is kind of reality and then these kind of almost fairy tale, fable like stereotypes of how people are supposed to behave. And I just think someone like, you know, making jokes about women with cocks and stuff like that. I mean, he's playing on these 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 fears is what he's playing on. Yes. These unbelievable fears of the other. Yes. And that's what trans people have to deal with. And now they're gonna have to defend themselves again and they're gonna look humorless and awful in doing so, right? Correct. And tiresome and bored. And you can't take a joke. Right. What was the classic thing? What is the thing that every racist out there would say? What? You can't take a joke? Right. I mean, literally, that's as old as the hills. Right. It's unbelievable. Correct. All right, I'm with we'll you.